This video is for AQA, A-Level Economics, and it's the four mark data question that you'll find in both paper one and paper two. So that's for microeconomics and for macroeconomics, and it's the exact same technique. So what I'm going to do to begin with is just look at uh, some key points that have been mentioned in recent years from the examiner's reports. Now, these points that I'm going to uh, show you now, these are not just one-off comments that have been made. You tend to find them every single year, which suggests that the, uh, these mistakes are repeatedly made by students. So the first point, the need for evidence. So as this point says, you need to provide evidence from the data. Then you need to clearly explain how the data acts as evidence to support the proposition that you are making. So the whole point of this question is, how well can you interpret the data? then how well can you actually use that data? And when you're using that data, you're trying to explain, obviously, what the question is asking. Now, what I will do is I will show you some answers which would not get full marks because of this mistake, but I'll also show you answers that would get the full marks because they do use uh, the data well and they use the data to help them to clearly explain. Now, sometimes figures were quoted inaccurately uh, due to possibly misreading the graph, misquoting figures from the tables, or, or more often not including the correct units. So you, you have to make sure that you are literally ticking the boxes when you're attempting this question. This question is all about technique. So make sure that you, you acknowledge what the, the, uh, the years or the, the, the times or the months or the units or whatever it might be. Be as precise as you possibly can. Be very, very specific. Now the mark schemes will allow a range, but that range it's, it's going to be realistic. If the, if the graph is a little bit more challenging to read, then maybe the range will be a little bit more generous, but it's not too generous. So therefore you have to really, really make sure that you're using the graph well, and um, you're making sure that you're reading it and make sure that your, the data that you're collecting from this extract is precise as it possibly can be. The next point is the explanations of how the data provide evidence were often unclear or limited. Are you actually answering what the question is asking? You will not be required to write a lot of information. Okay, It's not like, for example, a nine marker, but you still have to answer the question and you still have to make sure that that explanation directly uh, tackles what the question is asking. And the final point is, Whilst definitions are not always essential, they can sometimes help to spot the explanation. And not only that, but they can also make sure that you're interpreting or you're identifying the major focus of, of what's within the question. So, I'm just going to show you some examples. So, this was um, one question, which is in paper one. And it was explain how the data in extract D, figure four, shows that there is likely to be a substantial upward pressure on the wages of the care workers by 2041. So you can see figure three, you can see figure four. This question is only asking you to look at figure four. So that's one thing. Don't look at figure three because there's no need to. Just focus your attention on figure four. Use the data so you get your age groups, you've got your years in terms of 2016, and you've got your forecasts in terms of 2041. Now, this is uh, one answer. So when considering the data and the rapid growth in the elderly population, one would expect demand for care to rise rapidly, and thus the derived demand for care workers to also rise rapidly. This suggests excess demand for care workers at existing wage rates, as the supply of labour is likely to grow slower, consequently causing upwards pressure on wages. Now, within this answer, and feel free to pause it and, and give it another read, but if you have a look at the mark scheme, this wouldn't get full marks because what it's lacking is evidence. The explanation's there. It's a good explanation, but it doesn't include any quantifiable evidence. So what you need to do is you need to make sure that when you're having a look at the age groups and you're looking at the year 2016 to the year 2041, you're actually using the specific measurements from the ONS. So as we can see here, UK population is expected to grow by 2041 from using the data. Okay, so 65,648,000 to 72,905,000. And from that, the size of the elderly population will grow by 41.9%. So what I've done there is I've actually manipulated the data. 
so again, from this, I'm, I'm talking about the same time period. I'm using, I'm, I'm being as specific as possible. Even though I've, I've, I've calculated the increase in 41.9%, I still include the data as well, just to show the examiner. And therefore, the rapid growth in the elderly population, one would expect demand for care to rise rapidly, and thus the derived demand for care workers to also rise rapidly. However, the working population was only set to grow in that time by 2%, suggesting excess demand for care workers at existing wage rates as the supply of labour is likely to grow slower, consequently causing upwards pressure on wages. So it's still got the explanation. The explanation's been strengthened by the evidence because, the, because I've been able to use that data to then suggest why there will be excess demand. Now, another example, this is from another year, and this is explained how the data in extract A shows that the market power of the big four banks is weakening against competition from smaller rivals. So we've got our banks there, we've got our gains, we've got our losses, and what we need to do is we need to make sure that we obviously look at this information, we use the data. So the big four as a group have gained approximately 485,000, but lost 670,000, which is a net loss of 185,000. Barclays and RPS um, NatWest have been the biggest net losers, 100,000 and 115,000 respectively. While Santander, TSB, Nationwide and others have gained approximately 435,000, but lost 253,000, a net gain of 182,000. Now this answer uses the data, it's got evidence, but does it provide an explanation? Does it directly tackle what the question's asking? I don't think it's clear. So again, if you have a look at this one, market power, and this is one of the points from the, um, from the examiner's reports about a definition sometimes can help that explanation, and I think it does in this instance. So market power refers to the ability of a firm or group of firms to raise and maintain price above the level that would prevail under competition. Market, cal market power sorry, can be determined by market share and can provide the data needed to calculate the concentration ratio of the market to see the most dominant firms. Now, based on the data in extract A, the big four as a group have gained approximately 485,000 but lost 670,000, a net loss of 185,000 in 2016. So again, I'm using the data that I used in the last one, but I'm starting to provide a little bit more explanation. So Barclays and RPS, again, um, have been the biggest net losers, while Santander, TSB, Nationwide and others have gained approximately 435,000 but lost 253,000, a net gain of 182,000. Now, this is absolutely crucial, this last sentence. This suggests that the market is becoming more competitive with customers more willing to switch than companies such as NetWest losing market power. And that's what the question is asking about, is that market power.